So we've gone ahead after reading the question and drawn a girl located at the origin of an XY axis. And then over here on the right side of the diagram, we have the sled. And we know the girl is exerting a horizontal 5.2 Newton force on the sled. And we've drawn that force acting on the sled to the left in this diagram. We've come over here and we've drawn a free body diagram of the sled. We have the force that the girl is exerting on the sled, again pointing to the left, and we've indicated that with F. We have the upward normal force, which is the ice pushing up on the sled, and then we have the downward gravitational force. Now importantly in this question, we can safely assume that the upward normal force and downward gravitational force have equal magnitudes, so they're going to cancel out. And that means that the only horizontal force acting on the sled is that force with which the girl is pulling on the sled. So for the sled, we can set up a Newton's second law equation. We know that the net force in the x direction will equal the mass of the sled times the acceleration of the sled in the x direction. Again, the net force acting on the sled is the force that the girl is exerting on the sled, the 5.2 Newtons. So we'll put in 5.2 Newtons. This will equal the mass of the sled, which was given as 8.4 kilograms times the sled's acceleration, which is what we're solving for in part A. So basically just divide both sides of this equation by the 8.4 kilograms, and you will see that the acceleration is 0.619 meters per second squared. So this would be the acceleration of the sled, and that is the correct answer to part A of the question. In part B, we are asked to determine the acceleration of the girl. So similarly, we have the girl, and the only horizontal force acting on her is the 5.2 newtons. Notice, by the way, according to Newton's third law, that if she pulls on the sled with a force of 5.2 newtons, then the sled pulls on her with an equal but oppositely directed force of 5.2 newtons. So we can say that for the girl, the F net is equal to her mass times her acceleration in the x direction. Again, we'll use the 5.2 newtons as the only horizontal force. The girl's mass was 40 kilograms. And this will be multiplied by her acceleration. Divide both sides of the equation by 40, and you will see that the girl's acceleration is 0.13 meters per second squared. And this is the correct answer for the acceleration magnitude for the girl. Now we move on to part C. And part C wants to know how far from the girl's initial position do they meet. So let's go ahead and redraw the picture down here below. So here is the picture, and we've listed some important information for each object. Let's start with the girl, and since she starts at the origin, we have said that her initial x-coordinate is 0 meters. We don't know her final x-coordinate. In fact, that's what we're looking for in this part of the question. Her acceleration, as we noted earlier, is 0.13 meters per second squared. Notice it's positive 0.13 because she is being accelerated to the right in this diagram. And then we can assume that her initial velocity is 0 meters per second because she starts from rest. For the sled, we have listed similar information, but for the sled, the initial x-coordinate is 15 meters because we were told that the sled is 15 meters away from the girl. Notice that we have said that the final x-coordinate of the sled will be the same as the final x-coordinate of the girl, and that's because the two objects are going to meet at the same location. So it's important to understand that the x-coordinate for the sled, that is the final x-coordinate, will be the same as the final x-coordinate for the girl. The acceleration of the sled is what we found earlier, but notice we've put a negative sign on it because the sled is accelerating to the left in this diagram. And then again, the initial velocity of the sled is zero. Now, using all this information, we're going to recall an equation from one-dimensional kinematics. And we're going to plug in the given information for each object. So, starting with the girl's information, we would have x minus her initial x-coordinate, which was zero, equals her initial velocity of zero, times the time, plus one-half multiplied by her acceleration, and we will omit units for now for clarity, times her time squared. We can simplify this a little bit, of course. We can say x equals, this will cancel out, so we'll have one-half times 0.13, and in fact, that becomes 0.065 times t squared. So here's one equation that we're going to hold on to. Let's go to the sled 
and we'll fill in the corresponding information for the sled again following this equation. So the final x-coordinate is unknown minus the initial x-coordinate of 15 equals the initial velocity 0 times the time plus 1 half multiplied by the sled's acceleration times the time squared. We can simplify this equation as well to x minus 15 equals, this will zero out, 1 half times negative 0.619 is negative 0.3095t squared. So here is our second equation. We have a system of equations. We can actually solve this for the time and we can do that by plugging this expression in right here for x in the other equation. So we'll have 0.065t squared minus the 15 equal to the right hand side. Why don't we subtract this 0.065t squared from both sides of the equation. When we do that, we will get the left hand side as negative 15, the right hand side is negative 0.3745t squared. Divide both sides by the negative 0.3745 and the left side becomes 40.05 equals t squared. And then finally take the square root on both sides and you're going to get a time of about 6.33 seconds. So that's how long it takes for them to meet up, but we want the final x coordinate so we can actually go back to this equation and plug in the time that we just determined. So we have 0.065 times the time. This will be squared, of course. And when we work this out, we end up with a final x coordinate for the girl and for the sled of 2.60 meters. And this is the correct answer to part C of the question.